for two days to secure themselves a spot in the famed left field lounge, where Bulldog baseball is a lot more than just a game. Baseball in Starville, Mississippi is a social activity, and uh, we're able to, uh, uh, to have a little more freedom in left field than you do in the bleachers. Mississippi State's left field lounge has become the signature of Starkville. It's where you'll find the town's elite from March to May. It's a spot where the food is great, the atmosphere delightful, and the baseball exciting. Ron Polk has built quite a program in his 12 years at Mississippi State, three times taking the Bulldogs to the College World Series. First baseman John Mitchell played on the last Bulldog team to make it to Omaha, Nebraska, and in his senior year, he's hoping for a return trip. Mitchell is the seasoned veteran on an otherwise very young Mississippi State team. Brad Hildreth represents the Bulldogs' future. The sophomore hitting 354, he can really pick it in the field. And like the rest of his teammates, he benefits from the home crowd. Welcome to the big time of college baseball, Mississippi State University. <laughs> and tonight we're going to show you just how big time it is as we take you live to the left field lounge. Ole Miss taking on Mississippi State tonight on ESPN's Monday Night College Baseball. Welcome to the Diet Coke College Baseball pregame show. It's brought to you tonight by Diet Coke. You're going to drink it just for the taste of it. A very pleasant good evening. Welcome to the Left Field Lounge. I'm John Sanders along with Jim Cott. Delighted to have you with us tonight. We get set for Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Let's talk first of all about the Rebels. They had big hopes coming in this year. Well, other than trying to calm down this Left Field Lounge, Jake Gibbs has the same players back, but last year at this time he was hitting over 300. This year they're only hitting 269. Kyle Gordon, their first baseman, holds most of the Ole Miss hitting records, and Bubba Simon, their third baseman. Those two guys have to explode or they're going to be uh, swept here this evening. They have been shut down, though, by Mississippi State. The Bulldogs winning the first two games of this series with great pitching, complete games from their starting pitchers, and timely hitting as well. Well, two great games in the last two games, as you mentioned, but tonight, Terry Ellis, he has only two innings of collegiate experience going into this season. He's the key man for the Bulldogs tonight. They're there to come out of here with three victories. I guarantee you this. They brought the brooms to the left field lounge. It's Ole Miss and Mississippi State. We are live in the left field lounge. More coming up from Starkville, Mississippi after this. Welcome back to Duty Noble Field. I think if you took a poll here in the left field lounge, you'd know who they think is the best college coach in America. And collegiate baseball did just that. They took a poll of the Major League Scouting directors, who is the best coach in college baseball. They think it's Ron Polk of Mississippi State. You might, uh, you might consider another thing, Pete, just watching there. Every time you're striding, you're here. When you stride, just stay tall. And just, just shorten your stride just a hair, just a hair. But he's a very dedicated worker. Uh, he does, had, does all of the things that we would hope that all college coaches would do. Uh, there, there are a lot of college programs that, uh, that do not have the, the fervent interest that Ron Polk has in, in not only college but professional baseball. Well, our philosophy is don't overcoach. When a young man can show us that he's capable of doing some things uh, offensively and defensively or a pitcher, uh, we kind of leave them alone. We try to get them in a, in a situation where when they're making <clears throat> some mistakes or they're having a hard time, we try to help them get through those hard times. When you start thinking the guy's doing hard, your compensation is what? Swing hard. Swing hard. When you swing hard, you know, you don't, it's not so much it looks like you're swinging hard there, you're swinging hard here and you drill yourself right in the ground. Every swing and miss you had yesterday was under the ball. And what happens when he comes in here and you're swinging and you're dipping, and what happens? Then you can't get your hands out. How many times did you hit the ball right there? Thank you every time. Yeah, all you got to think about, the guy's throwing hard, stay tall and just think relaxation and just, just throw your hands. Don't bury yourself in the ground. From 1983 to 85, Polk had All-Americans Will Clark and Rafael Palmero. Great hitters with different styles, but both prospered under Polk. If the coach just tells every kid in his program, this is the way we're going to hit at this particular institution, 
or this is the way we're going to field ground balls at this particular institution. I think sometimes you'll be making a very big mistake because there's a lot of components in baseball that are, are done very well in a very different manner. He's a teacher of the game. You know, he teaches. Uh, he goes over every single thing that there is about the game. And, uh, you know, he'll go over it, over it and over it until you get it right. And uh, I tell you, if, if he's not the best coach in the, in the country, I don't know who is. Well, it's not just the players that feel that way. There are coaches around the country who have shown that they think Ron Polk is a great coach, and I know you feel the same way, Jim. Well, what I like about what he said, overcoaching, that's such a danger. I know that from coaching myself, to say too much or do too much. And I'll tell you, college baseball today, when I was in the minor leagues, you learned it on your own. But now you can come to college like Mississippi State and get an education and learn how to play baseball. They've got to learn how to relax here in the left field lounge. We've got Ole Miss and Mississippi State coming up live from Starkville. This has been the Diet Coke College Baseball pregame show brought to you by Diet Coke. You're going to drink it just for the taste of it. Stay with us. We're going to move from the left field lounge to home plate. College baseball coming your way live next on ESPN. Ours, as you know, is not a perfect world. May I? That's why it's so refreshing when something really perfect comes along. Like Diet Coke. Tastes great straight, or on the rocks. Yet it's just one calorie. That's why Diet Coke is the perfect soft drink. <laughs> For an imperfect world. Just for the taste of it. Diet Coke. Starkville, Mississippi, our rivals Old Miss and Mississippi State set to meet tonight on ESPN's Monday Night College Baseball. We're trying to warm it up here in Starkville after a very chilly weekend. It's going to be cloudy, cool, but dry for tonight's game. For Old Miss, Coach Jake Gibbs, very first Rebel team in 1972, went to the College World Series. Leading off for him tonight is the left fielder Mike Dominic. He's on a six-game hitting streak. Batting second is the center fielder Roger Smith. Great range in the outfield. Batting third is the first baseman, Kyle Gordon. He holds five career Old Miss batting records. Batting cleanup is the third baseman, Bubba Simon. He has four hits in the series. That's most of the Old Miss offense. Batting fifth is the catcher, Joe Jex. He's batting 438 against Southeastern Conference opponents. Batting sixth and playing right field is Robert Cole. They call him Popeye. He has a gun for an arm. Batting seventh, the designated hitter, Scott Chesser, a high school teammate of Bulldog starter Terry Ellis here in Starkville. Batting eighth and playing shortstop is Keith Kessinger. He's just rounding into shape after the Rebel basketball season. And batting ninth and playing second base is John Paul Gentleman. Only four errors and 153 chances this season. And defensively for the Bulldogs in left field, Dan Paradoa, Jody Hurst will play center, Tracy Eccles in right. At third base, Pete Young, Brad Hildreth, the shortstop, Burke Masters at second, and John Mitchell, co-captain, the first baseman. Behind the plate, Barry Winford, and on the mound, the right-hander, Terry Ellis. Ellis coming into tonight's ball game with a record of 4-1 and one and a fine ERA of 270. And John, he's not known as a power pitcher. Ron Polk told us he's got the uh, split-finger fastball that we can look for him to use against left-hand hitters, a good breaking ball. And with most pitchers, uh, the same case, control, very important. Well, let's find out about Ron Polk and how he feels about his starting pitcher tonight. Coach? Terry Ellis, a junior, is going to be our starting pitcher tonight uh, against the Ole Miss Rebels. And Terry is a breaking ball pitcher, and if he gets his breaking ball over the plate, he's going to be very tough. He's had two great back-to-back -back outings in the Southeastern Conference. And keep in mind, as Jim said, here's a young man who only pitched two innings prior to this season, so he has been out there for 33 and a third innings tonight. Set to face Mike Dominic, Roger Smith, and Kyle Gordon tonight. Mike Dominic is going to be a fan's favorite because he is the left fielder. That means he'll have some good friends out there where we just left. He will build some character. You'll build character playing left field in this stadium. I bet they won't be serving him catfish as they did us before the ball game. Great people out there, great atmosphere here. 
there are so many charcoal grills out there it gets smoky you can hardly see the outfield this facility a gorgeous place for college baseball just completed and dedicated this year we're underway in Stockville Mississippi Dominic has scored one run in this series and there have not been many he scored four runs in the very first inning of the opening game on Saturday, but only one run since then. That was Bubba Simon's home run over the right field scoreboard. A junior from Starkville, Terry Ellis. You saw that one drop off the table, Jim. Uh, both those last two were the split finger, and uh, this kid's pumped tonight. He was talking to his buddies about pitching on television and uh, being the pitcher to sweep Ole Miss. That's big here in Starkville. Line for the shortstop, out number one. Hildreth puts the squeeze on it. That's the first out of the ball game. Meet the coaches now, and we'll be working the coaching boxes for tonight's game. For the Rebels of Ole Miss, down at first, that's Johnny Flint. As he takes his jacket off. You'll see number 45, Larry Simcox, is the coach at third. And working in the bench, of course, the head coach, Jake Gibbs. Second batter is Roger Smith, the center fielder. Roger takes a pitch just off the plate. One out, nobody on. Top half of inning number one. It's all natural surface here. Beautiful ballpark. Baseball and the grass is real. Only way to play it. One and one. See, here's the breaking pitch that Ron Polk says Terry Ellis has to have. And watch that ball break. Now, that's not the split finger. That's the slur. Another strike. It's one and two. Ellis coming into this game with 25 strikeouts in his 33 innings and 12 walks. An excellent ratio. Especially for somebody who pitched two innings last year. There it is. Got him swinging for the second out. Let's take you around this beautiful ballpark in Starkville. The place to hit it, obviously, is down the line where it's only 325. The alleys, it's 373. The friendly confines of the left field lounge and 390 to straightaway center at Duty Noble Field. Kyle Gordon, he's all everything. You look at the record books for Ole Miss. See how they play him defensively because it's almost a complete shift. You can see where the second baseman is there, John, right behind the bag. First baseman is almost to the second base normal position. Very similar to the way they would play Dave Kingman. Two balls and one strike on Kyle Gordon. Kyle, though, looking for his first hit in this series, is 0 for 7. It's that to left. Coming in quickly is Paradoa. Can't get there. Drops in front of him. So our first hit of the night belongs to. Kyle Gordon, his first hit of the series. Now the key for any pitcher who is not a power pitcher generally is to keep the ball down, especially the breaking ball. Now look at that pitch. Hung up above the waist, and that's what Gordon's been waiting for. Pitches like that will bring good hitters out of their slump. Here's Bubba Simon. His season number is 376, and he has four hits in this series, one of them a home run. He has been about all the offense that the Rebels have had. Played at Chipola Junior College. Here's a good swing from left-hand hitter Bubba Simon. No contact, but he's their best hitter right now. Capacity here, 6,700, but that does not include the left field lounge. Oh, and two. The left field lounge is elitist in that those people who are in left field lounge think they're it. But the truth of the matter is the left field lounge extends all the way around to under the scoreboard in right center. We heard some of them tell us they were in line on a Wednesday morning, I believe, to get spots in that left field lounge when they went on sale on Saturday. That's a tougher ticket than the final four. That's a tough ticket. 0-2 oh on Bubba Simon. Runner at first is Kyle Gordon. He's single. John Mitchell, the 
lone regular who played in the College World Series two years ago when the Bulldogs were in Omaha, Nebraska, holding him on at first. The fans here anticipating that third strike. <laughs> you bet. We mentioned 6,700 in the bleachers in the grandstand area, but you can get about 10,000 in this ballpark. You count the area beyond the outfield fences. Hit a man left in the top of the first inning. Two strikeouts in that inning for Terry Ellis. So now it's time for the Bulldogs as they come to bat for the very first time this afternoon in Starkville. Bulldog coach Ron Polk has the youngest team in his 12 years at Mississippi State. Six freshmen and sophomores in his starting lineup, which tonight begins with the catcher, Barry Winford. His twin brother Ron is an outfielder for the Bulldogs. Batting second is the shortstop Brad Hildreth. He was chosen a freshman All-American by Baseball America last year. Batting third is the left fielder, Dan Peradora. His 20-game hitting streak ended Saturday. Batting cleanup is Pete Young, the third baseman. He's also the Bulldogs' top relief pitcher. Batting fifth and playing first base is John Mitchell. He hit 341 in the Alaskan League last summer. In center field and batting sixth is Jody Hurst, a freshman who turned down basketball offers to play for Ron Polk. The seventh batter, the designated hitter, Mike McCraney. A senior, he's the co-captain on the team, along with John Mitchell. Batting eighth and playing right field is Tracy Eccles. He's hitting over 100 points higher this year than last year. And batting ninth and playing second base is Burke Masters, a freshman, straight A's in high school, and now the same thing in college. And for Ole Miss defensively, Mike Dominic. He'll feel the wrath of that left field lounge in left field. Roger Smith in center, Robert Cole in right. At third base, Bubba Simon. Keith Kessinger plays shortstop. John Paul Gentleman at second. Kyle Gordon, the first baseman. Behind the plate, Joe Jex. And on the mound, left-hander Brian Becker. Becker's 5-1 and one with a 2.55 ERA. And like Ellis, not a power pitcher. Depends on control and a good breaking ball. He's a senior. He's from Dexter, Missouri. His coach decided to go to him. Jake Gibbs going with the left-hander. Here's what he has to say about him. Brian Becker's our pitcher, and uh, he's a five-year guy, and he's a left-hander, and, and he's got a, a different assortment of pitches. He has a cut fastball, and he has a running fastball, an overhand curveball, and then he's a, he's a good control pitcher and around the plate, and, and he'll do a good job. When he says a cut fastball, Jim, he's talking about basically a true slider rather than a real breaking pitch. When Ted Williams said the slider was the toughest pitch to hit, he's referring to the pitch young pitchers today call the cut fastball. It's a very sharp, short-breaking slider. Leadoff batter is the catcher, Barry Winford. 308 is average, very unusual, even though this is the second year in a row that the Bulldogs have had a catcher leading off. Good sign to see a catcher with some speed at the top of the lineup. This kid's a prospect. Two for five in the series. He's hit a home run, has three RBIs. Everybody's swinging the bat. As a matter of fact, of the nine guys in the lineup, everybody has an RBI except for one. That's the kind of offense they've, they've had so far in this series. Barry Winford. Well, they are red hot with the bats, aren't they? Well, and if one thing Jake Gibbs would like to have, if you talk to the old cliche, take the crowd out of the ball game, you hear it a lot, but it'll be important here tonight. You see that pitch, bell tie, Winford gets the Bulldog started. That's what Ole Miss wanted to prevent tonight. Here's Brad Hildreth. Brad, a sophomore from Mobile, Alabama. They say he has a big league arm at shortstop. Pretty good batting average to go with it, 354. The Bulldogs of Mississippi State, 17 and 9, coming in. Probably ought to clarify one thing, John, when he said Becker's a fifth-year senior. They redshirted him his freshman year. His redshirt year was 84. That's popped up into shallow left. Dominic, a long run, can't get there. It drops for a hit. Two on with nobody out. Well, you'll hear about that when he goes back to left oh, field. Man. Well, and as you look at some of the fans here at Duty Noble Stadium, if you're if you're Mike Dominic, you don't want to go back near that left field lounge crowd right now. Here it's the old I got it, you take it. 
Kessinger, Smith, and Dominic all converging. And none of them could get there in time. It falls for a hit. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Dan Paradoa is the batter. Paradoa has four RBIs in the series. He has been busy. The Bulldogs are busy here in the top half, bottom half of inning number one. McCall strike. Let's check out our umpires for tonight's game behind the plate. Paul Andrew Jepski, Tony Thompson, who really organized the umpires in the Southeastern Conference, and Ken Couch is the umpire down at third. This is the first conference to go to conference umpires. Use the same crews that rotate them around. This crew has worked this entire three-game series. Coaches really uh, like that rule, too. They get the same umpires throughout the conference. No balls and two strikes on Paradoa. Two on for the Bulldogs. The Diamond Dogs, as they call them here in Starkville. Uh, Jake Gibbs was telling us in our meeting today, trying to get his young pitchers to learn how to pitch inside and then come back with that breaking ball. That's what Becker did. You can look for him to come back right here with that low and away slider. It drops out of the strike zone, and the count is two and two. Good test of this young man's poise right here in the first inning, trying to avoid being swept in Mississippi State's own backyard and two men on with an early jam. This will put him to the test. 2-2. Hit on the ground. In the right field, base hit. Winford around third, heading for the plate. Here's the throw. 1-0 Mississippi State. It was one of those, nothing you can do about it, just out of the reach of gentlemen at second base. Looked when it was uh, first hit, not hard enough really to be a double play, but really looked like a catchable ball. But of course, gentlemen shading over toward second base for the double play. Three straight hits here in the bottom half of inning number one. We have some debris out on the field that will be tracked down by Ken Couch. So while we do that, let's check the coaches for the Bulldogs tonight. Working the baselines. At first, it's Brian Shoup. And the head coach himself, Ron Polk, in his jacket over at third. He told me he doesn't coach there. He's stationed there. That's his spot. Popped up. First pitch by Pete Young is popped up to the right side. Gordon in fair territory for the first out. Still runners at first and third now with one out. See Gordon shaking his head. He had a little problem picking up that uh, pop-up. That will bring up John Mitchell, the first baseman. Probably some of that smoke in his eyes drifting in from the left field lounge, John. That, John, that covers the whole field. It is 1-0, three straight hits by Winford, Hildreth, and Paradoa. Young popped up, but now Mitchell. This is our fourth stop along the way, regular season college baseball on ESPN. Becker almost threw that ball away. Mitchell, the batter at the plate, is a senior from Corinth, Mississippi, and co captain of the team. Along with Mike McCraney. Breaking ball. Hit into shallow right. Backing out is Gentleman. Two outs. A couple of good pitches there, Jim, to get the two pop ups. Yeah, don't get on me now, but I mean, do you like gentlemen's mannerisms at second base? <laughs> His <laughs> manners? <laughs> yeah, that was good pitch on the part of Becker to come back uh, to one of their better left-hand hitters, and he got that breaking ball over. That's the key as Jake Gibbs sit for him. Here's Jody Hurst. 
You've been saving up that gentlemanly conduct all yeah, day, haven't you? Right. <laughs> Move to first to make sure the Paradoa stays close. Keldreth the runner at third. Winford has scored the run in the inning for the Bulldogs. One nothing. Bottom of the first, two outs now with runners at the corner. Oh, good location there. 0 and 1. Becker, a senior. He's from Dexter, Missouri. going to be a little conference at the mound. Hurst will wait while Jex and Becker talk it over. Hurst, by the way, one of the many young players on this team. He's a freshman from Meridian, Mississippi. First and third, two outs, a run in. Bounced that off his leg. 0-2. Oh Well, you see this so often on the pitch kind of inside that wasn't quite as low as most of them but a lot of hitters wear that protective guard on their front leg to prevent that popped out of play not really to prevent it but to protect against it because boy that's painful almost like a catcher getting a foul tip off his toe when that ball comes right down on top of that spike no protection there what a great atmosphere at duty noble field can't beat this for college baseball a lot of effort has gone into this stadium. $3.5 million project. We'll talk about it as we go along. They didn't go to the state and say, give us the money. Fine folks here in this area did it themselves. They're very proud of it and their baseball program. With good reason. He takes a call in third strike and the inning is over. Three hits, one run. Mississippi State scores to take the lead after one. It'll be the Rebels when we come back to Starkville. I'm Kimball Crossley to tell you about Crossley's Spring and Easter Boys Suit Sale with 20 to 40 percent off on 150 boys' suits, including Huskies. For both boys and menswear, I invite you to shop Crossley's for better selections. Famous brands, Botany 500, OP, Era, members only, Florsheim, Stacy Adams, Allen Edmonds, French Rhinus Shoes, Lee, Levi's, and many others. Big and tall, Husky and slim sizes, plus expert fitting. Come shop where quality and service still mean something. Crosley's downtown Columbus. Wednesday, the battle for the Stanley Cup begins live on ESPN. The toughest teams in hockey face off in game one of the divisional semifinals. Live Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Well, the best in college baseball right now, that's the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. They've won 18 in a row. They are averaging 13.6 runs per game. They've hit 59 homers in 26 games. Texas, 38 and 7, is ranked number two in the country. LSU with a team ERA, team ERA of 2.51, is number three. Then Oklahoma, undefeated in the Big Eight thus far, ranked number four at 24 and 6, followed by Stanford, then Pepperdine, Florida State, UCLA, Arkansas, and Clemson. How'd you like to pitch for a team that uh, averaged 13.6 runs a ball game? Wow. <laughs> of course, Oklahoma State will be featured next Monday night on ESPN as we go to Stillwater, Oklahoma, here. In Stockville, Mississippi, it's the Bulldogs one. The Rebels nothing as we go to the second inning. Pretty good job of pitching, though, by Brian Becker because they could have had the table set for a big inning. Got to be happy if you're Jake Gibbs to get out of that inning with just one run. And for Texas, you talk about them being ranked number two. Brian Cesarek is hitting 435 on the season. The Longhorns are back. Swing and a miss by Joe Jex. Ellis had two strikeouts in the first inning. Jex, another senior from Bay St. Louis, Mississippi.
Here's a look at the motion of Terry Ellis. Ron Polk did not expect this youngster to come along quite that quickly. Good upper body action. Gets ahead in the count one and two on that swing and miss by Joe Jex. Joe has just one hit in the series. And that quick glimpse on that replay, you could see how quick he was from the waist up. Good arm speed. Fouled out of play. That one hit produced three runs, a three-run double in a four-run first inning for Ole Miss. That's been about it in this series thus far. The Rebels are four and seven in conference play. The Bulldogs are four and six. It is one nothing here at the top of the second inning. At Dooley, Duty Noble Field. In case we haven't mentioned it, he was, of course, the coach here for many years at Mississippi State. How to play down the other way. Tom Swayze is back with the Rebels of Old Miss, and if you go to Old Miss, you'll know that their field is named Swayze Stadium for Coach Swayze, who retired and then has decided to come back and work with the hitters under head coach Jake Gibbs. That was him in your picture right there, former catcher, of course, with the New York Yankees, and I think we'll develop some of his other accomplishments as we go along tonight. And they are numerous. Just missed. Two balls and two strikes. Through the left side for a base hit. Jack stayed with it. Got it past shortstop Brad Hildreth. Second hit of the ball game for the Rebels. Sometimes even when you make a quality pitch, you give some credit to the hitter. Now watch Jex right here. He goes down and away out of that strike zone. Nice effort on the part of Hildreth, but that's a good piece of hitting by Joe Jex. Here's the man they call Popeye, Robert Cole. One for seven. He has been struggling, though, in his last 19 games. He's batting only 200. <laughs> Joe Jex, the runner at first. As the Rebels try to come back here in the top of the second, down by a run. I know what the people in Starkville did all day. They sat around and made signs. And cooked. <laughs> Kept that breaking ball out of the way from him. Couldn't get to it. No balls, two strikes. Cole, another senior from Meridian, Mississippi. Went to Meridian, Meridian Junior College. The Bulldogs lead 1-0. Notice numerous throws over to first base. Pitching coach Pat McMahon has a definite sequence, so the pitcher knows whether he's going to first or to the plate before the pitch. Three straight breaking balls on the outside part of the plate, and that's it for Robert Cole. Three strikeouts now for Terry Ellis. Now, most of the time when a hitter's slumping, he swings at bad pitches and feels for the ball, and there's an example of that right there from Robert Cole. Started out the season hitting well over 500 the first 10 games. Has not been the same hitter since then. Here's a hometown boy coming back to Starkville. Scott Chester. He's over 8. He definitely feels the pressure. He was greeted in the left field lounge. And not with respect, we might add. Scott, a hometown boy. Scott and Terry Ellis, the pitcher, played together here at Starkville High School. Big as Starkville, about 20,000 in the city. Tremendous rivalry between these two schools, and you can feel it when you stand out there in the left field loud. Very little love for Ole Miss right here in Starkville. They have played over 300 times. Series dead, though, to Mississippi State. 75 152, if you're interested in the numbers. What they get into it too. They didn't come here to sit on their hands. Well, you know, there's no big time sports around here in terms of professional sports or uh, racing of any kind. College baseball is the biggest happening in this area, and they they enjoy it, they support it. There is 
is also an amateur team that plays out of Starkville in the summertime. Many of the players wind up playing their baseball in the summertime here as well. So far, Ellis has been very effective at keeping that breaking ball away, and so far the Rebel batters have had an idea to try to go after it. Well, once you get ahead, that's the key for Terry Ellis, and he has been getting ahead. And then, as in Robert Cole's strikeout, you'll get the hitters to chase the pitches. That's why it's so important to get that first or second pitch in the strike zone, primarily the first one. Joe Jex led off the inning with a base hit. He's still at first with one out. Great location. Four strikeouts in the first two innings for Ellis. And here you see Scott Chesser. He chases that pitch just like Robert Cole did before. And strikeout number four for Ellis. So Scott is 0 for 9, and he has struck out four times. Keith Kessinger. Really just rounding into shape because he played for the Rebel basketball team. He didn't intend to, but he originally went to Ole Miss to play some basketball and decided he wanted to go to baseball following the footsteps of his dad. But the basketball team got in trouble and they called him back. But he says from now on it's strictly baseball for Keith Kessinger. When you talk about answering the call, I understand they called him on January 8th. He practiced on January 9th and played on January 10th. Did a three-point shot to beat Tennessee later on in the season. One ball and one strike on Kessinger. Boy, and you remember Don Kessinger, the fine shortstop with the Cubs? This young man doesn't look just like his father. Same action, same build. Let's see if you recognize this guy. An old Miss All-American back in 64. And a future All-American. Moving on the pitch, it's fouled at the plate. Still one and two. So Joe Jex will backtrack. Neither one of these teams runs that much. That's not in their repertoire. Winford has done a good job behind the plate. very fortunate here to have Pat McMahon. We mentioned uh, the pitching coach at Mississippi State and talking to some of the pitchers before the game. They, they had a lot of confidence. I mean, he's not a gimmick man, a lot of gimmicks that they work with, but good, solid fundamentals for these pitchers. Count even to two and two. If you get the feeling as you watch the game that it sometimes gets cloudy, it is like a fire in left field. A constant stream of smoke circles the stadium. Smell that catfish up here in the booth. Five strikeouts in the first two innings for Terry Ellis. A hit, a man left, will go to the bottom half of inning number two. Mississippi State leading one nothing with McCraney, Knuckles, and Masters coming up. The temperature drops below 30. Remember the spark plug that's tested to start below zero. Champion, we go to ridiculous extremes to test the reliability of our spark plugs. ESPN Live 
presentation of college baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By American Express, membership has its privileges. Don't leave home without it. By the Champion Spark Plug Company. And by Mercury, makers of the all-new Mercury Tracer. Mercury, the shape you want to be in. We are live as we look into the left field lounge and enjoy college baseball in Starkville, Mississippi. one nothing. the Bulldogs on top. I'm John Sanders along with Jim Codd, who's going to look at the motion of Brian Becker. Well, Brian, a six-foot-one-inch left-hander, tall and lean, good high leg kick. Not an exceptionally long stride, but good, solid, smooth motion. No mechanical glitches right there in that motion. Six Bulldogs batted in the first. As we go to the second, it'll be the bottom third of the order. McCraney, the DH. A couple of home runs this year. A senior from Louisville, Texas. He's hit safely in his last three games. Ron Hoke feels that uh, Mike has started a little slow because in his senior year he'd really like to go out with a big year and he's pressing a little bit as the plate as a result the numbers have not been that good so far. Bulldog bench there. The guy that pitched for them yesterday, Mike Martin. He's got a lot of friends watching tonight. Danville, Virginia, Charlotte, North Carolina. He's got family all over the country. And we welcome all of you to Monday Night College Baseball. An adventure into the state of Oklahoma. Next Monday night for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State will be in Stillwater as they take on Texas A&M. Fly ball to right field. Slicing toward the line. It'll drop for a base hit. Cole tracks it down, but not before McCraney pumps into second with a double. Exactly what Ron Polk was talking about. Now that pitch right there, instead of trying to pull the ball, McCraney went down, went the other way with it. Cole had no chances. The faster he ran, the more that ball just sliced away from him. Good hitting by McCraney. A leadoff double in the second inning. The Bulldogs had three hits for Coach Ron Polk in the first inning and produced one run. Knocking at the door now with Tracy Eccles. Eccles has a home run in this series. Over his head. Now Eccles' job right here is to just pull that ball to the right side of the infield. Not necessarily a base hit. The object is to get McCraney over to third base with one out. And Eccles, even though he's the number eight batter, is the leading hitter on the team. He has raised his batting average over 100 points from last year. Four hits now for the Bulldogs. We're in the bottom of the second. Mississippi State leads one nothing. Ahead in the count, he could let that one go by and look for something in his zone. He did in his 3-0. Oh. Well, he's got a right-hand hitter coming up next, so that's a bad situation for Brian Becker. When you've got a left-hand hitter up there, especially down in the lineup, you want to be aggressive and go after him. It'll be Burke Masters to follow. There's a strike. Eccles is hitting eighth against left-hand pitching because he doesn't hit them well. Against right-handers, he'll be up at the top of the lineup. He's got the numbers to match it. Three and one. Grounds it to the right side, so he has done his job. It's a tight play at first, but the out is recorded. McCraney winds up at third with one out. Looking at Kyle Gordon right there, and really a dangerous play. He let that ball play him. He laid back on the ball, and it almost cost him. Normally on a 
on a high hopper like that, an infielder wants to make a quick decision to charge that ball and get it closer to the bag. The play should not have been that close. Here's the number nine batter, Burke Masters, a freshman from Joliet, Illinois. For the runner, third and one out. Look at the fastball up too high. have a lead late in the game you'll see them line foul on the right field line Brian Shoup had to dance out of the way in the first base coaching box and that expression is not that old in baseball I think I first heard it in the late 70s with the Phillies and uh, we had a good ball club that year and on the verge of sweeping a couple of teams and everybody said get the brooms out but years ago in baseball you never used that expression when you talked about sweeping a series Hardware store is probably glad they came up with it. Absolutely. Masters in the series is two for six. He has an RBI. Chops it toward first. Should score the run. Everybody's safe. Two nothing Mississippi State. Now there's a real mental error right there in the part of Brian Becker and it's so easy to do you see that ball high hopper and right there Becker should have been going as fast as he could to cover first base he's nowhere in your picture he just anticipated that Gordon was going to be able to field the ball and flip it over to first base to the second baseman or take it himself mental error in the part of Brian Becker. See those numbers. That's the way it's gone for the Rebels so far in this series. Winford singled and scored the first Bulldog run. Five hits now in the first two innings for Mississippi State. McCraney doubled to begin this inning. Eccles bounced out. First baseman to pitcher to move him up to third, and then on the slow roller he scored, and often running on the play that time was Burke Masters. Masters has stolen six out of seven this year, but he'll have to retrace his steps. I think Ron Polk senses he's got he's got old Miss on their heels right now, mentally as well as his hitters have things going for him. He's going to take advantage of it. He'll send the runner as he did in that particular case. Becker trying to keep him as close as he can. Two nothing. Bulldogs leading the Rebels here in Starkville, Mississippi. One ball and two strikes now. Becker tries to get off the hook. Only one out. Masters the runner at first. Now there are two out. Second strikeout for Becker. Oh, we refer to a breaking ball quite often as a slur instead of a curve or a slider. And that pitch right there was exactly that. Too hard to be called a curve and too big a break to be called a slider. And the, the term nowadays is a slur, and it's Brian Becker's best pitch. So Hildreth now four for ten in the series. They've got the runner picked off. But the ball is thrown away. They had to play where they wanted it, Jim. They just couldn't turn it into an out. Well, and Jake Gibbs commenting on his power hitting first baseman Kyle Gordon said that one of his weaknesses is he doesn't have a strong throwing arm and I said well that reminds me of another outstanding first baseman in the major leagues who has piled up some great stats and that's Steve Garvey never noted for his throwing arm 
And that's what happened to Gordon right there. Very weak throw and inaccurate. That'll put another runner in scoring position now for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. No balls and one strike. On the batter, Brad Hildreth. Runner at second is Masters. So credit Masters with a stolen base. Put himself into scoring position for Hildreth. Did he hold up in time? Yes, says the third base umpire. Here's the off speed pitch from Becker. Now watch Hildreth way out in front. He looked like he went around at that ball. Most of the time on the replay, they go around. Hitters won't admit that. And pitchers cry when they see it. <laughs> we just know the truth, that's all. <laughs> Three and one to count. <laughs> now it's full. It's the bottom half of inning number two in Starkville. Duty Noble Field, where they sold 3,300 season tickets this year. Grounded to third. Simon's throw is low, and he threw it away. The Bulldogs will get another run. Hildreth around second on his way to third. Here's the throw across. Not in time. 3 nothing Bulldogs. Very frustrating for Coach Jake Gibbs. Bubba Simon is a good third baseman, but most of the errors he's made are on throws just like that. And that's one of those plays where, as a player, you know you've got all the time in the world. Instead of getting it and getting the ball over there quickly with something on it, you kind of ease up and aim it over there, and that's what happens. You throw it away. So on the play, Hildreth winds up at third. There are still two outs. Dan Paradoa is the batter. He had an RBI single his first time up. Anytime I see a left-handed hitter in that uniform, you have to think about Will Clark and Rafael Palmero, who were so successful here for the Bulldogs. Probably both watching tonight, along with uh, Bobby Thickton, another product of MSU in the big leagues. It's a foul ball. It hit the batter. Bobby Thickpin now with the White Sox, who opened today with a victory over Kansas City. And we got the word that there are a lot of fans watching ESPN tonight and the Mississippi State Bull Bulldogs at Loring Air Force Base in Minnesota. So we send along our best wishes to them. The Palmero and Clark are etched in the record books here. Thickpin, you don't find his name too often, but he has come on strong made it to the big leagues much quicker than people thought he would as a pitcher. Well, like Coach Polk will tell you, what a genius he is. He didn't really pitch until his senior year. Primarily because he, did he didn't want to. He enjoyed playing uh, the outfield and swinging the bat. That is Hildreth at third with two outs. Big breaking ball for a called strike three. So Becker gets out of the inning. He did not get much help defensively. Two more runs for Mississippi State. The Bulldogs lead it 3 0 in Starkville. The American Express card contains a single word that makes every other card seem like just a piece of plastic. Member. I seem to have lost my wallet. To us, Stephen Gardner is a member. Mr. Gardner. I can have a new card for you by tomorrow. And at American Express, our card members are entitled to a world of privileges. We lost our card, our cash. Even our passport. You've come to the right place. I can help you. Good. That's great. That was an easy sale. No need to wrap it. I think I can fix it, honey. That's why I got buyer's insurance. Hello, American Express. I left my prescription medicine at home. Don't worry. Global Assist can help. Bangkok today. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm packed. Members carry our promise of respect, recognition, unsurpassed personal service. Membership has its privileges. Marvelous Marvin Hagelin's brother is making a name for himself. You'll see why when middleweight contender Robbie Sims takes on Lee Sanders in Top Rank Boxing's main event. Live Friday night at 9 Eastern on ESPN. We're going to the third inning here in Starkville, Mississippi. Stay with us because Sports Center will follow and we will go live with post-fight reports from Caesars Palace. It will be on at 11.30. Hagler Leonard and we will go live at 11.30 tonight. Now look at the motion of right-hander Terry Ellis from the third base side. Nice high leg kick. Both these pitchers with good fundamental. You'll notice he does hit on a stiff left leg. They're not the classic motion of a Tom Seaver. And they are counting the K's thus far, and there have been indeed five of the first six outs have been on strikeouts. Another interesting thing that they do here at Duty Noble Field is they just recently announced while we were away that the bleacher, the grandstand area was now open to bleacher season ticket holders. In other words, they can move from the bleachers to the seat backs now, so a lot of them have made the trip toward home plate. Gentleman rips a single to left. The Rebels have had a hit in every inning. Gentleman leads off with a single here. Well, and he's only hitting a, a buck 93 coming into tonight's ball game. One of the hitters that Jake Gibbs says he's waiting to, you know, this is basically the same lineup he had last year, and they've proven they can hit. But they just have not been productive yet in 1987. So for Gentleman, his second hit in the series, back to the top of the order now on the left fielder. Best friend of those in the lounge, and Mike Dominic. He lined out the short his first time up. Well, that's not fair if you're on a diet. We were out there before the game. They treated us to some great catfish. Now you can pick up the aroma of those barbecued ribs they've got going out there. Diving back is John Paul Gentleman. from Germantown, Tennessee. Dominic is from St. Louis. We mentioned the three youngsters that got to the big leagues from Mississippi State. There's a couple of coaches, Del Unser, Alex Gramis. In fact, my first league, big league ball game that I saw in person, Boo Ferris was the pitcher for the Red Sox. He's a graduate here at Mississippi State. Bulldogs lead 3-0. Runner at first, nobody out in the top of the third. That ball's hit hard to right field. But right there is Eccles for out number one. Hit it right on the button, Jim, but he hit it right at him. Well, he did. That's the best ball that the Rebels have hit tonight off Terry Ellis. And here you get a look at the swing of Mike Dominic down in the strike zone. Good extension, head right on the ball. No results, fly ball to right field. One of the five strikeout victims of Terry Ellis is this senior from Memphis, Tennessee. Gets that foot finger working, doesn't he? He's got them all working right now. Better fastball, really, than I thought. I mean, when they say a guy's not a power pitcher, I was looking for a soft tosser, but Ellis has a better than average fastball. Moves ahead in the count 0 and 2. And he's doing a good job of keeping that fastball up in the strike zone. Very difficult for the left-hand hitters to handle the high pitch. He went after it. First base is occupied, so the batter is out. Strikeout number six for Ellis. And once again, the advantage of getting ahead in the count. Watch where this pitch ends up. 
No way you're going to swing at that pitch if it's 2 and 0 or 3 and 1, but on 0 and 2, pitcher's advantage. Kyle Gordon singled his first time up. And that was his first hit in the series. So Gordon now one for eight. Kyle has a string of offensive records a mile long for the Rebels. How about that location? Well, I think he got caught guessing right there. Like you said, he has all the old Miss hitting records, but he's just in a in a period of time right now where he's guessing, not hitting the ball well, not seeing the ball well. He has struck out seven in the first three innings. It is 3 nothing. The Bulldogs lead as we move along to the bottom half of inning number three here in Starkville. It'll be the Bulldogs to bat when we come back. Fashions for Easter, fashions for spring, fashions for men, Missy, junior sportswear and dresses, even maternity wear and accessories. We're Kitchen's Incredible with it. Incredible because we give you the South's greatest selection of famous brand merchandise at savings of 30 to 60 percent off retail. For fashions for all seasons, shop the South's most famous off-price fashion store. Kitchen's Incredible with it. State Shopping Center, Starkville. Well, this is luxurious carpet made of allied Anzo 4 nylon. This is Miss Clark's kindergarten class, and this is the school test. 40 pounding little feet tracking in dirt and grit. A hundred spills and messes every single day. But this carpet has built-in soil and stain resistance, so it comes up looking so smart. You want to take it home, because smart carpets start with allied Anzo 4. you doing? Me and Daddy are putting new brake shoes on this car. Well, cars don't wear shoes. Brake shoes, honey. They stop the car. We owe you Guardian brake shoes, don't we, Dad? Nothing better. I learned about Guardian from my dad. Nobody makes brakes better than Guardian, and nobody makes it easier. Can I have new Guardian shoes, too? Safe stop start with Guardian brakes. Another indication of one of the changes in baseball over the years, John. Pitchers, you, when they got out of the inning, they used to just come in, sit down, put a jacket on. Now a little more animation and enthusiasm. You see the high fives that Terry Ellis gets greeted with. Ellis is having a great time tonight. First of the, of the first nine outs, seven have been on strikeouts. He has given up a hit in every inning. We're in the bottom of the third. Clean up batter Pete Young to lead it off. He popped up his first time at bat. Hits this one into center field. Out of the smoke come Roger Smith. Now that ball was hit well, and just a freshman, Ron Polk could use Pete Young a number of different ways. He's a catcher, and he also does some pitching. You can call on him in late inning relief situations. No, they haven't called the fire department. That is where dinner is being served. As a matter of fact, they sent some ribs up to the booth, so if you don't, know. If you don't hear from Jim for a while, if you hear some smacking, you'll know what's going on. Oh, that's cruel. One out for John Mitchell, who popped up to second. His first at-bat. Good breaking ball. 0-2. Oh, oh, without some shabby defense, really, Brian Becker's pitched good enough baseball to, uh, to be behind by no worse than one to nothing. Strikeout number four for Becker. And Jody Hurst, who struck out his first time up, will now face the senior from Dexter, Missouri. Three runs on five hits for Mississippi State. No runs on three hits for Ole Miss. One of those three runs is unearned. Here's what Brian Becker's left-hand breaking ball looks like if you're a left-hand hitter. No chance with that pitch down there. Nice he pops that one outside, and it's 0-2. That, of course, was the left-hand swinger. 
John Mitchell on that previous pitch. Ground ball fair. Down the left field line. First around, first on his way to second. Dominic has trouble with it down the line, but finally comes up with it. And I'm sure there will be more grief for Mr. Dominic in left field. Well, as you look at Mike Dominic, here's Jody Hurst. Down the third base line. Out of the reach of Simon. Now watch Dominic. He's going to have a little trouble picking this ball up. With some help from his friends. With the influence of the left field lounge, visiting left fielders have made five errors already this year. No error there. It's a double all the way. Breaking ball drops in for a strike. We'll have some other stats that we can talk about later on about the success of left fielders in this ballpark. McCraney doubled and scored his first time up. We talked about left fielders and how they perform in this ballpark with all the, the folks out there in the left field lounge. We'll, we'll show you exactly what we're talking about in a minute. they are the folks in the left field lounge how about those numbers never lonely out there is it I'll tell you the left field fans in Wrigley Field would enjoy coming here to Starkville ground ball to the right side it is cut off by gentlemen will throw to first and the inning is over so the double but no damage in the second we'll move to the fourth here in Starkville Mississippi the Bulldogs leading the Rebels by a score of three to nothing Your life is changing, and State Farm is there. I'm State Farm agent Jim McConnell. Terry Saylor's life insurance started out pretty simple. Then there were three children, two new mortgages, a big job promotion for Terry, and for Mrs. Saylor, a life plan of her own. Seven updates in just six years. State Farm agents are there to start you out with life insurance that works for you. And like a good neighbor. And we're there to keep it working for you. State Farm introduces a new friend tracer with 68 standard features it's all there when you need it you're a friend of mine only my little brother would get me out of bed at 3 a.m mercury the shape you want to be in they call him the venezuelan giant Cesar Porcio left his home country a couple years ago. Now he's tearing up South Florida high school basketball. Hi, I'm Chris Fowler. Join me for ESPN Scholastic Sports America Saturday. Welcome back to Starkville. Just before the game, that Bulldog accepted the award as the country's top mascot. He's enjoying himself, or herself, tonight. Well, the uh, Reds minor league coach, former big league pitcher, Harry Doris, he'd love it down here because his... His motto for all the young pitchers was, son, you've got to be a bulldog out there. And I'll tell you, you'd be very popular being a bulldog here at Starkville. We go to the fourth. The chant goes up. Bubba, Bubba brings a little smile to Simon's face. Bubba struck out his first time up. has struck out seven in the first three innings. He's just been dazzling because he's thrown everything up and he's gotten it over the plate. Gotten ahead, good tempo. He's caught it. I don't think these guys don't know that this is a chance for their school as well as individually to have the, uh, the nation watch them perform. And uh, it's a special game for them, and it is for Ellis. He's a six-footer, 161 pounds. You hear Mississippi State. You seldom hear people say University of Mississippi. It's Ole Miss. 
there's a little blurb in their press guide about that. You know, the University of Mississippi is the university, the bricks, the mortar, but the spirit and the emotion seems to be old Miss. That's something that hangs with you forever. And they are very proud of it, and rightfully so. These two teams will play one more time. They're playing Jackson, Mississippi, later in the season. The Bulldogs lead Ole Miss 3-0 here in the top of the fourth inning. A base hit to right. The Rebels have had at least a hit in every inning, and in each of the last three innings, they've had the leadoff man aboard. Uh, with a swing like this, that's why Bubba Smith hitting, Bubba Simon rather, hitting 376 coming into tonight's ball game. That's good swing. Joe Jex let off the second with a single. He has a hit. Gordon has a hit. Simon with the fourth hit there. And John Paul Gentleman has the other hit. But so far, Terry Ellis has been able to go to the strikeout pitch. And second base hit. Chopper up the first baseline, it squirts foul. This is the kind of game, though, John, where you, we've had the feeling the first three innings, Mississippi State has the crowd, uh, they have the two wins, uh, Terry Ellis has been the dominant pitcher, but yet Becker has kept his team right there. And with all the activity, Mississippi State, as we look at Jake Gibbs, could well be up by five or six runs. Well, that third run was unearned, and obviously, the Bulldogs have had some chances. They've had more base runners. Well, the kind of hitters that Ole Miss has, uh, they can come back in a hurry. Here. Hot shot to third. Young to second for one. That's all they'll get. Good play, though, by Pete Young at the third to cut down the lead runner. Well, we mentioned the versatility of Pete Young. He can catch, and he can also do some relief pitching and get a look at this throw right here. Very difficult position. And now as you just get a look at that slide on the tail end of that play, we're going to get an argument with, from Ron Polk who came rushing out of the dugout. He felt like maybe the umpire should have called an automatic double play for sliding out of the line, but he loses the argument. The other thing you cannot do in college baseball is throw a rolling block. That guy at second base. Runner at first with one out. Robert Cole, who struck out his first time up, is the batter. First time up, everything Ellis threw, Cole was away. This time he drops one right on the inside edge. Here come Cole has really backed off that plate. You see it right there. So you know where the pitch is going. It's going the other way. Two. One out, one on. Got him again, same spot. Eight strikeouts for Ellis. Well, Robert Cole, as we mentioned, buried in a slump right now. And from the place he's at, away from the plate, very little chance of getting the barrel of the bat on that ball right there. Another K goes up in the column of Terry Ellis. Chester, a strikeout victim his first time up. I think we mentioned before these two uh, Ellis and Chester played high school baseball together right here in Starkville. Very unusual for first of all a Starkville native to play baseball at Mississippi State and highly unusual for a Starkville native to go away to school to Ole Miss. Well as they pointed out in the left field line they sent him away to junior college. <laughs> it's a great rivalry.
One ball, one strike, two outs, one on. Top of the fourth, three nothing, Mississippi State. Hit deep to left field, down the line. On the move is Parador, can't get it. It's into the corner. On his way to third is Bubba Simon. He's going to try to score. Here's the throw that got a chance at him. He's safe at the plate. Joe Jacks, who pedaled all the way around to beat the relay. All right, here's the relay throw right here. Now, let's get a closer look at it. It appears that it's there in time. But what we didn't see right there is that catcher, Barry Winford, juggle that ball. Paul Andrzejewski, very wisely, waiting until the play was complete and pointing right there to show you the ball, the ball was on the ground. Right. The ball had been dropped. Good call. Good slide. So it's three to one. The runner at third now. A chance for the Rebels to climb right back in this one. So often you'll see an umpire call that play right away and then later have to change his decision. Andrew Jeffsky waited. Scott Chesser credited with the RBI double. His 14th of the year. Check it out one more time. So good defensive play by Mississippi State is negated right there with the drop ball at home plate. Fly ball to left field. Paradora is over his head. It'll bounce up against the wall. It's a 3-2 ball game. Kessinger on his way to second with another double. Back-to-back -back RBI doubles by Chesser and Kessinger, and it's a 3-2 ball game. We should point out, too, on that last call at the plate, it was not the home plate umpire. He had moved down the line. So that means the umpire at first. Tony Thompson came down to make the call. Good umpire. And as we mentioned, this old Miss team very capable of doing what they're doing right now. Two doubles and a single here in the inning. It's 3-2. John Paul Gentleman, who has a base hit to his credit tonight. For Kessinger, his first RBI of the season. Keep in mind, he had only 15 at-bats coming into the game tonight. Ground ball to third. Young is there. His throw on target. The inning is over. Three hits, two of them doubles, and Ole Miss scores twice. Bottom half of inning number four coming up. Mississippi State by a run here in Starkville. I'm Spike from Job's. How do you help keep your trees tall, green, and handsome? With Job's Tree Spikes. Watch. Surface fertilizers can get partially washed away, but Job's continuously feeds vital nutrients where it counts, at the roots, so your tree looks tremendous. Thanks to Job's Tree Spikes. Job's Spikes for shrubs and young trees, too. Job's does the job at the roots. Here's a great shot from our crew right here on that very close play at home plate. And now you'll get a look. See the ball? You see the ball just for an instant there, right underneath catcher Barry Winford. But now the Bulldogs lead has gone from three to one. It's three to two now. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning for Tracy Eccles to lead it off. Then Burke Masters and Barry Winford. You've heard it before, but once again, most important inning for Brian Becker to retire the Bulldogs after his team has gotten them back in the ballgame. Remember that the third run scored by the Bulldogs was that unearned run, the result of the error 
on the throw. So Mr. Becker could be even at this point. He gets a ground ball to gentlemen. One out in the bottom of the fourth. Sharply hit ball right at John Paul Gentleman. And Coach Jake Gibbs is the best at turning the double play. Probably the best defensive second baseman in the Southeastern Conference. And maybe that they've had at Ole Miss for quite some time. Masters hit a chopper to the first baseman. Kyle Gordon his first time up. He wound up with an infield hit out of it and an RBI. The RBIs to Dan Paradora. Also to Burke. The run scored on an error as well. Line shot to short. Two out. Keith well, Kessinger, you like him at short? Yeah, it's just, I was just going to say it's amazing to watch him move and his actions and, and his build, as we mentioned earlier. I mean, you can just see Donnie Kessinger right now out there at shortstop. Just a freshman. You know, most shortstops you see are short in stature, quick, but uh, Donnie and son Keith rather on the rangy side. Well, didn't that used to be the old school thinking that a shortstop should be rangy, tall, lanky, so he was able to move back and forth? Like Marty Marion, Ronnie Hansen. Very few of them. Robin Yelp, maybe. Uh, few years ago. Now you've got the Ozzie Smiths, quick, agile. You've got the much heavier version of Ozzie Smith this year. He put on 16 pounds yeah. of upper body weight. And we, in addition to say heavier, we should say stronger. It'll be full-time baseball for Keith Kessinger from now on. Count is two balls and two strikes on the leadoff batter, Barry Winford. Of course, Cal Ripken uh, with the Orioles. Now he'd be an example of a of a big shortstop. Dump court center field. Smith coming on in time to make the play. So one, two, three. The Bulldogs go in order in the fourth. We will go to inning number five in Starkville. It's Mississippi State three and Ole Miss two tonight. standard features because the best friends are the ones that'll do anything for you. I made it safe because you're a friend of mine. Mercury, the shape you want to be in. Wednesday, the world's roughest sport returns to ESPN. Catch all the wild and wooly action on the season premiere of Australian Rules Football, Wednesday at 5 Eastern on ESPN. Jerry Dean, Jake Gibbs was an All-American at Ole Miss for the Rebels, 59 and 61 as a baseball player. That wasn't the whole story. He was also an All-American in football. Led his team to the national championship and finished third in the Heisman voting. And then wide on to the Major League where he took care of you a few times, right? Yes, he did. <laughs> and we were talking about comparisons to Jake Gibbs, I guess, right now. The, the big story in the big leagues would be Bo Jackson. He chose baseball over football. And then we had another outstanding college football star that could have played baseball, John Elway. He went the football route. So you can, you can choose either one if you're blessed with that kind of ability, like Gibbs and Jackson and Elway. We move now to the top half of inning number five and the top of the order coming up. 
Mike Dominic, Roger Smith, and Kyle Gordon. Dominic hit the ball pretty hard twice. Line to short and line to right. Nothing to show for it. Man's starting to get back into it now. A lot of those in the bleacher sections have moved to the main grandstand area where there are seat backs as opposed to bleacher seats. Good crowd on hand tonight. Tried to drag it. 0 oh 2. This is John Sanders along with Jim Codd, and you see the grandstand area where they do have the seat backs. $3.5 million. A lot of hard work by a lot of people here in Starkville to put this together. They're very proud of it. The fact that they sold 3,300 season tickets tells you something about it, and a special price tag for those who would buy those tickets in advance. You've heard some of the stories about how long the folks waited to get those choice locations in the left field lounge as well and those parking spots alone are anywhere from 50 bucks to as high as 135 just to get a place to to park your uh, camper or pickup truck out there and most of those vehicles that have been turned into seats are inoperable as a matter of fact we opened the hood on one and there was a barbecue grill where the engine used to be hey, there's <laughs> there, it is a work of art a couple of those as you take a look at them right there Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Well, Becker did, did his job. Very important for him to keep the Rebels in the ball game. And now the pressure's back on the shoulders of Ellis. He's had things his own way the first three innings. And the Rebels began to break through in the fourth. So a key inning for him. And that fourth inning, the first inning in which he did not record any strikeouts, he had seven in the first three. Or excuse me, eight. He did get a strikeout in the fourth inning. So he has had one in each inning. If we recheck the old card here. He had two in the first, three in the second, two in the third, and one in the fourth. Full count now on Mike Dominic. It's also that the Rebel batter is starting to be a little more patient up there, Jim. There's an example of it right there. Well, you get into that second and third time around, the advantage begins to go toward the hitter. There is activity. West Johnson, Johnson, first number walk 10 of the, the ball bullpen. game. You look at West Johnson beginning to loosen up in the Bulldog bullpen. Called strike to Roger Smith, who has struck out twice. Takes a look at Coach Larry Simcox. A one run ball game for so the tying run. The potential tying run is a board for the Rebels. Boy, great stop right there by catcher Barry Winter. You see how he shifts his body. He didn't make any attempt to really catch that ball. The object was to just get the body in front of the ball and keep the runner from advancing. He did a great job of it. Fourth straight inning that the Rebels have had the leadoff man aboard. They made it pay off for the first time in the fourth inning when they scored twice. It's a 3-2 ball game. Tried to bunt and miss. Dominic at first has stolen nine out of ten. See, a little play like that might get lost in this inning, but that changes the whole complexion of the inning. If that ball gets by, now Smith can pull the ball to the right side and advance Dominic to third and put him in scoring position with one out. You can see the hole on the right side. Second baseman. Masters cheating a little bit for the double play. Closer. The hits are now even at six apiece. It's a ball and two strikes on to Roger Smith. Runner going. Strike out at the plate. And on the plate, Dominic gets his 10th stolen base. 
for strikeout number nine for Ellis. And now the tying run is at second base for Kyle Gordon, who's one for two. A chopper toward short. Long throw coming up for Hildreth, and it's not in time. Hildreth waited till the ball came down, and by that time it was too late to get Gordon. Another one of those cases of laying back on a ground ball. Of course, that was a tough hop for Brad Hildreth, but the only chance he had of getting Kyle Gordon was really to charge that ground ball and get it on the short hop. Once he laid back, no chance. So Gordon will get credit for his second hit of the ball game. The runner at second, Dominic, stayed put. And Bubba Simon now with two on and one out. Simon is one for two. And right now, Jake Gibbs has things just the way he would like them. This is his best hitter. Hit the ball well the last time up. And he's got the lead runs on the bases. That one drops in for a strike. But as I said a little while ago, the Rebel batters are laying off that first pitch more often now, making him throw the strikes before they start going after the ball. Ground ball toward first. The out will be recorded there by Mitchell. So with two down, there will be runners at second and third. Well, with Bubba Simon, the Rebels' best hitter at the plate, anxious to knock in the runs, and this is sometimes the result of a good, aggressive hitter going after a pitch well out of the strike zone, not a pitch that he could drive at all, and an easy ground ball. So we will have the conference at the mound. I would think this conversation right here might be about Joe Jex and Robert Cole. We've talked about the slump that Robert Cole is in. And Joe Jex with a uh, base hit in tonight's ball game has been hitting the ball well in this series. He may have just said, look, let's not let Jex get a pitch to hit right here with runners on second and third. If we lose him, we've got Robert Cole, as we look at Wes Johnson right there, coming up to the plate, and he's been in a slump. We'll take our chances with him. So let's see what Ellis and Polk and catcher Barry Winford decide to do. Runners at second and third with two out. You're exactly right, Jim. I think that if he throws Jex a strike, it'll be a mistake. Unless it's a strike like that. I'm <laughs> sure that was the instruction. In fact, I, I never liked that. I mean, you have to have exceptional control for a manager to say, well, don't give him anything good to hit, but pitch around him. That's the toughest thing in the world to do for a pitcher. Reach down, lines at the short, the inning is over. The Rebels strand two. They leave runners at second and third. They do not score. Bottom half of the fifth coming up, 3-2, Mississippi State. For the Bulldogs, Hildreth, Paradoa, and Young, do up. At Rick's Discount in Starville, quality name brands and the guaranteed lowest prices go together. No specials, no sales. The lowest price every day is our guarantee. Maytag washers and dryers, Genera ranges, tapping ranges, and Speed Queen sold every day at the best price anywhere. Televisions by Philco, Zenith, and Hitachi. Volume is our way of life. We will not be undersold. 19-inch color TV by Philco, 219. 25-inch color by Philco, 399. At Rick's Discount on Stark Road in Starville, we service everything we sell. Open till 7 p.m. Sullivan's Office Supply is your office supply source. We have everything from metal desk to clean used furniture. Sullivan's carries tables, desks, and chairs in both traditional and modern styles. We have everything from coffee tables to conference tables. Sullivan's features such names as Jocko, Steelcase, and Leopold. So when you think of office furniture, think Sullivan's, your office supply source. Sullivan's, located downtown Starkville. We are back in Starkville, Mississippi. I told you they had sign painting one and two at the university today. 
Three to two, Mississippi State leads Ole Miss, but the Rebels are right back in it as we have reached the halfway point in tonight's game. Bottom half, the fifth. Big break right there for Mississippi State, really. They were trying to pitch around checks, not give him a good pitch to hit. He hit it right on the nose, but right at Brad Hildreth. And here's the ground ball that Kyle Gordon hit. Now, you see how I'm lay back? He's retreating. He lays back on that ball. He's got no chance. The only chance they had of getting Gordon. When you saw those two little hops back, that's when the shortstop has to charge the ball. It is Hildreth who will lead off the bottom half of the fifth inning. Singled and reached on an error. And Brian Becker is still in this thing. He's given up six hits. Defense has made one error behind him that cost him a run. The Bulldogs won the first two games, 11 to 5 and 8 nothing. Right center field, a base hit. So Hildreth is two for three and the leadoff man aboard in the fifth. Well, you look at Coach Ron Polk and then quickly shortstop Brad Hildreth, one of his prized recruits. And he went down and got that pitch, took it the other way. Good hitting. Parazoa, the batter now. One for two with an RBI. Singles to drive in the first Bulldog run. Just a uh, sophomore. He was drafted by the Yankees in 1985 after his senior year in high school. Breaking ball stays inside. One ball, no strike. Ideal situation for Paradoa right here. Breaking ball pitcher, a left hand hitter that can pull the ball with a hole open. One and one. And he took a good pitch to hit right there. That one kind of floated in, didn't it? I think he'd like to have that one back. Hits are even at seven apiece. Mississippi State leads three to two. Roller toward second. Gentlemen, in a hurry for the first out. Hildreth winds up at second. For the cleanup batter, Pete Young. We have activity in the old Miss bullpen as well. Darren Musselwhite loosening up. You cannot see the bullpen from our position, from the grandstand area. They're behind the bleachers. Now three for 11 in the series. He waited on that one, but got it too high in the air to left. Dominic and Smith come together, but it's Dominic for the out. Two down. You saw the bit on Ron Polk before the game where he talked about Pete Young. He went after a pitch, swung aggressively, and here you see a little lack of communication. Maybe it's a lack of being able to hear the other guy out there. <laughs> I think that the left fielder, left field lounge, has a little influence on him in that situation. Well, you saw the aggressiveness with which Dominic went after it. The beating his ears have been taking, he wanted to make the play. They started on him in pregame drills. You know, he came out to the fence and complimented all the fans about they were doing it right out there, and they appreciated it. They said, hey, once the game starts, we're not cutting you any slack. Two outs now with that runner at second. Mississippi State leading by a run. See Becker going to the fastball a little bit more now. A lot of breaking pitches earlier. He's trying to mix that fastball in a little more often. Hit 
pitch to strike out, gets out of the inning. We played five in Starkville, Mississippi. It's the Bulldogs three and the Rebels two. Back with more baseball and focus on the left field lounge after this. Bud Thunder, it's revved up and coming at you. down to an STP adds extra lubrication to reduce engine wear in whatever you drive. STP is the racer's edge. Still waiting for that part on your lawnmower engine? Next time, make it a Briggs & Stratton engine and our 25,000 fully stocked parts and service centers all across America. Briggs & Stratton, the power in power equipment. Wednesday. The battle for the Stanley Cup begins live on ESPN. The toughest teams in hockey face off in game one of the divisional semifinal. Live Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. I'm Spike from Job's. How do you help keep your trees tall, green, and handsome? With Job's Tree Spikes. Watch. Surface fertilizers can get partially washed away, but Job's continuously feeds vital nutrients where it counts, at the roots, so your tree looks tremendous, thanks to Job's tree spikes. Job's spikes for shrubs and young trees, too. Job's does the job at the roots. If I'm not mistaken in the left field lines, that's Jim Cott's hamburger that's flaming up there. <laughs> Yeah, we've talked a lot about the left field lounge and the tradition here at Mississippi State. You know they have 20 radio stations on their network, a TV show that seven stations carry featuring Ron Polk. The biggest in college baseball. Up the middle by Cole, gets through for a base hit. Hildreth thought he had it, looked in the glove, nothing there. So again, the leadoff man is aboard. That's the fifth straight inning in which the Rebels have had the leadoff runner on. You know, you mentioned Coach Tom Swayze, the former head coach before Jake Gibbs took over. He's still with the ball club, works with the hitters. He spent a lot of time with Robert Cole in the on-deck circle before that at bat last inning. There's a look at Coach Swayze right there. And he'll, uh, he'll talk to the hitters, even during the ball game, about things he sees. Scott Chesser with an RBI double his last time up, and he scored on the double by Keith Kessinger. the entire ball game pitching out of the stretch. He has never retired the side in order. And in five of the first six innings, the Rebels have gotten that leadoff man aboard. They've now out hit the Bulldogs 8-7. Shows bunt, pulls it back. 2-0. Wes Johnson has been throwing behind Terry Ellis in the bullpen. Nobody out. The runner at first. Quick move. And one of the differences in college baseball, in the big leagues, see, that's a balk right there, that spin move. And in college baseball, it's allowed. Runner going, throw to second is high and in safely with a stolen base is Robert Cole. He's now nine for nine in stolen bases. So the tying run is in scoring position again. Well, with, with Dominic and Robert Cole, the Rebels have good speed, but Cole's problem up till now is he just has not been getting on base. Throw just a little bit high. Now a chance for Chesser to pull his team even. Still thinking about getting that run at the third. Throw down by Winford. Now 
Jake Gibbs has some options here. Way ahead in the count, 3 1. Chances are he's not going to bunt for the tying run, but he wants Chester to go the other way with the pitch. Good numbers with runners in scoring position. Took the full rip, and the count goes full. That's a good pitch when a young pitcher can get an off speed pitch in the strike zone when he's behind in the count. Not many can do that. Robert Cole represents the tying run. It's 3 2, Mississippi State. He went around. Big strikeout for Ellis. His pen. Well, you could call it good pitching or bad hitting, but Scott Chesser. Way ahead in the count, three balls and one strike. His job was to hit the ball the other way and advance Robert Cole. And he didn't make an effort at either pitch to hit the ball to the right side. So up, up to Keith Kessinger now. Roller down the first base line into foul territory. Runs on seven hits for the Bulldogs, two runs on eight hits for the Rebels. Kessinger doubled, drove in the second run for Ole Miss. Drives it to left field. Once again, Paradol back, it's over his head and bounces into the left field lounge. That will save him a run in all likelihood. But no, he was at second base, so he will score, and the game is tied. So on the play, Cole pumped around third. He scores. It's a ground rule double, and we're even. A brand new ball game here in Starkville. Well, it's not taking Keith Kessinger long to get his stroke back after his stint on the basketball court. He rips this ball. And there you get a look at one hop into the left field lounge, and one of the <laughs> left field loungers taking a little tumble down into the alley there along with that baseball. So... Kessinger with RBI double each of his last two times up has tied the ball game, and that will be it for Terry Ellis. He leaves with 10 strikeouts. He leaves with the score tied, but the go-ahead run is on base. So a new pitcher coming up for the Bulldogs. We'll be back after this. temperature drops below 30. Remember the spark plug that's tested to start below zero. Champion, we go to ridiculous extremes to test the reliability of our spark plugs. Some party, huh? And everybody's drinking caffeine-free Diet Coke. The happening drink. Hey. Same incredible taste as regular Diet Coke. One wacky little calorie. And hold the caffeine, pal. So grab yourself a caffeine-free Diet Coke and relax. The caffeine-free you drink just for the taste of it with 100% NutraSweet. Love your scar. When my new sales manager told me that I had to stay at a Econo Lodge, I was not happy. Because uh, I'm a Ramada Inn, Howard Johnson's kind of guy. I was so worried about what I'd find here, I even brought my own towels. But no problem. An Econolodge room is just like those other rooms, except it's about 15 bucks a night less on the average. Got the same nice bed, same nice phone, same nice color TV. And look at this. Gray towels. Econolodge. Spend a night, not a fortune. So, freshman Tracy Jobes will come on in relief of Terry Ellis and try to get out of the jam here as the Rebels have come back to tie this game up. Jobes, just a freshman and a power pitcher. You get a look at his motion right there, right over the top. And there's Terry Ellis, five and a third innings. Of course, still responsible for Keith Kessinger at second. There's a look at his numbers tonight. Fine performance. But the Rebels are back in this ball game. And up till now, Jobes, in 14 innings, has walked 12 men. So Ron Polk is concerned not with his stuff, but just with his ability to get the ball in the strike zone. 
And John Paul Gentleman, who's one for two tonight, singled back in the third inning, will bat with Kessinger at second. I'll tell you what, Jim, you've been around long enough to know that if you pitch six innings and the leadoff man gets on five of those six innings, they're eventually going to do some damage in it, most cases. It will catch up. It's a brand new ball game here in Starkville. 3-3. Three, three. Nine hits now for the Rebels. They battle back to tie it up. Hey. Joe, See, here's a case. Even 175 pound freshman. Excuse me, John. Here's a case. Where you see Job's a freshman, inexperienced, hard thrower, lacks control. Ron Polk wants him just to get a couple of outs for him. Get into that seventh inning for him. Then he'll go to somebody like Wes Johnson or Tommy Rappo, a little more experienced. But he doesn't want to go to those two guys this early. So Job's job right here is just get two or three outs for the Bulldogs. Fights it off in foul territory. Indication of Tracy Job's fastball. Watch how late right here. Gentleman just barely gets the bat on the ball. Just enough to save himself another swing at 2 2. Go ahead, run it second. Lined up the middle, base hit. Kessinger will not try to score. Runners at first and third. Well, an old miss beginning to come out of their slump here. Gentlemen didn't get around on the pitch before that, and there you see good contact. Head on the ball right up the middle. Gets rewarded with an RBI. It is a 3-3 ball game, and now the Rebels are in double figures in the hit column at 10. There is Johnson, who continues to throw. Johnson was first up and throwing. Dominic and Smith are both left-handed batters coming up, so that will be it. Jim, your suspicion was exactly right. Job's job is to try to get an out. He didn't do it. And the Rebels are still in business, so we'll have the third pitcher in the inning. The left-hander. Wes Johnson coming on. He's a junior. We'll have more about him when we come back to Starkville, Mississippi, and more baseball after this. Look at Snoopy. He's in training again. He's working like a dog, sir. But why? Because everyone at MetLife wants to meet customer expectations. <laughs> and then go that one extra mile. I've never seen him run so fast. It must be his commitment to high quality, sir. Besides, there's a new cat next door. Get met. It pays. Brand new ball game here in Starkville. It's 3-3. As we await another pitching change, Wes Johnson is loosening up. The best in college baseball on Monday nights this spring here on ESPN. Got a couple more coming up for you next week as well. As a matter of fact, the number one team in the country, Oklahoma State, will be here on ESPN. Taking on Texas A&M in Stillwater. Here's the left-hander. Now, Wes Johnson, 6'2", 200-pounder. He's a junior. And so far this year, his record, he hasn't won it. He's lost one. But he's pitched just 10 innings. And in those 10 innings, nine strikeouts. You get a look at his numbers right there. Not a power pitcher like Job's, but a hard slider. Good fastball, but a hard slider is the pitch. And as John mentioned, with a couple of left-hand hitters in the Ole Miss lineup right here, Johnson's job will try to be to get ahead and get that slider working toward the outside corner. Runners at the corners to pick up the motion of the left-hander. Fairly straight up. That's one thing young pitchers stand straight up from that set position. And then the longer they pitch, the more they learn to get a little more flex in those legs from the set position so they can throw the ball as well from the set as they do from the windup. Oh, 
fails the first one high and inside. Dominic 0 for 2 tonight. Lined out twice, walked, and stole a base. And defensively, they squeeze towards second. Even at the bag at third, and of course the first baseman holding the runner. The center fielder, Jody Hurst, is shaded in the left center. So there is some room in the gap in right center. Surprising how close the shortstop is playing to second. Playing him like a full hitter, yet the center fielder playing him the opposite way. Made him throw a strike. It's two and one. For a power pitcher, or fairly hard thrower like Johnson, you would think that Hildreth would be shaded more into the hole with this left-hand hitter. I think he'd have trouble pulling him. And he slices it through the empty hole with a shortstop who pulled use that as a motivational tool for himself and maybe using it again now to get back in the ring that 118 to 110 what would normally be a route for the shortstop but he was playing for it second and it produces a run well, of course these both these teams have scouting reports on the respective offenses straight away or even the other way and of course right there cost the Bulldogs a base hit Charged that run to the starting pitcher, Ellis. So he is responsible for the four runs, but that will close the book on him. A chopper towards second. This could be two. There's one. Double play, and the inning is over. But two runs. Four for Ole Miss. The Rebels have come back to take the lead. The Bulldogs will go to work here in the bottom half of inning number six when we come back. Hey, could I tap some of your computer expertise, son? So you finally gave in. Yeah, for starters, how does the disk fit into the disk drive? Okay, the Army can train you to program, operate, or fix computers. What does the printer interface do? It lets the computer talk to the printer. They talk to each other. What do they say? And then there's a telephone motor hookup. And the computer training you get is yours forever. Be all that you can be. Looks like you're not going to be the only computer expert in the battle. <laughs> Marvelous Marvin Hagler's brother is making a name for himself. You'll see why when middleweight contender Robbie Sims takes on Lee Sanders in Top Rank Boxing's main event. Live Friday night at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Wednesday, the battle for the Stanley Cup begins live on ESPN. The toughest teams in hockey face off in game one of the divisional semifinals. Live Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Communication between infielders so important, in this case, second baseman Burke Masters and shortstop Brad Hildreth. You see the ground ball, Masters takes it. Now he'll... Marvin, marvelous Marvin Hagler is disappointed. And Masters completes the easy double play. And Brad Hunter the first time. Tonight has a lead to work with. They have come all the way back. Single run in the first, two in the second for the Bulldogs, but. That Brian Becker and not Brad Becker, my mistake. Short hop to third by Simon. His throw in time. Well, and oftentimes the job of a third baseman is just to keep the ball in front of him. You see, Simon has trouble fielding the ball, finding it, but with that strong arm and accurate throw, just got it. A bang-banger at first, but he was out. McCraney doubled and scored in the second. That's how Jake Gibbs commenting on Simon. I mean, he's what the players call a gamer. He'll get down there, throw his body in front of that ball, just like he did there on that bad hop. Talk a little bit about the pitching job that Becker has done, going with a lot of breaking pitches earlier. Seems to be mixing a few more fastballs now, but he's, he's kept his control and his composure tonight. Good off-speed pitch right there. He is 
he's been the guy. Most of the attention has been on Ellis because of the 9-10 strikeouts and all the hype here at Mississippi State. But Becker's just right along doing his job, keeping his team in the ball game. He has struck out five thus far. One out, nobody on. Bottom of the sixth. Count evens of two balls and two strikes. As you mentioned, early in the ball game, a lot of breaking balls, and, and then changing his pattern. And Jake Gibbs, a believer in letting the pitcher and the catcher, which I like, get together on what they want to throw. He'll help them occasionally, but not a lot. Still two and two. And that's that's a sign of good communication between pitcher and catcher. First time around, gone to a lot of breaking stuff. You know, Jax might have said, hey, let's mix in a few more fastballs now, and he's been effective doing it. Still two and two. Four runs, 11 hits, one error. For Ole Miss, 3-7-0. and oh. The numbers at this point in the ballgame for Mississippi State. And we're in the bottom half of inning number six. I'm John Sanders along with Jim Cox. We are very happy to have you with us tonight. Keep in mind at 11.30 it'll be Sports Center, and we will be going live to Las Vegas for post-game report on the fight in Vegas. So we'll have the interviews live here on ESPN after the fight is over. Pitching inside after you've used a lot of breaking pitches. So important for a left-hander to a right-hand hitter. Look at that one. Right on the inside corner. And six strikeouts now for Brian Becker. The number eight hitter, Tracy Eccles, 0 for 2 tonight. 3 for 7 in the series. This is game three. The Bulldogs have won the first two. Eccles hit a home run in game one. That breaking ball there, which was high in the strike zone, but just because a breaking ball is high doesn't mean it's a